Imagine growing up without parents, being German in times when they were discriminated against, yet managing to make it through all of this and start up a billion dollar watch company. That is exactly what Hans Wilsdorf did. Most of the top-notch companies out there have founders with inspirational stories that drove them to reach for the sky and the story of the founder of Rolex is one of them. Hans Wilsdorf, the founder of Rolex, was born in Kumba, Germany to parents who dealt with an iron goods business. Their family was a middle-class one and they managed to live quite a decent life. Sadly, all this came to an end when Hans became an orphan which forced him to stay with his mother's brothers. His uncles tried to do what they thought was best for him and sent him to a boarding school after selling the inheritance that his parents had left for him. At this boarding school, he learned different languages like German, English, and French, and this really helped him while setting up and running businesses. He used to be quite depressed as a kid, but as time passed by, he managed to befriend a Swiss lad who told him all about Switzerland and introduced him to the world of watchmaking. And since then, Hans was intrigued by watches and wanted to move to Switzerland. He kept that spark alive in him and, with a leap of faith, he moved to Switzerland at the age of just 19 in the year 1900. And he secured a job at a pearl exporting company where he learned quite a few business tactics. During this span of time, his friend got in touch with Hans and made him quite an offer at Kuno Korten, a company that exported Swiss watches worldwide, that Hans' heart and mind could not refuse. So Hans packed up his bags and left for La Chure de Fond, where he worked as an English correspondent and clerk, and he winded Swiss watches for a meager salary of 80 Swiss francs. Though Hans was not making much, he was happy until he was called back to Germany as he had to serve his compulsory time in the army. This was just two years after he had joined Kuno Korten, and he was quite sad about it. But once he was done with the army in 1903, he got straight back to making his dream a reality. Hans moved to London to make his dreams come true, and here he worked for a firm that dealt with high-quality watches. He worked in their sales division where he was working on increasing sales. During this period, Hans struck a rather intriguing conversation with his brother-in-law, Alfred James Davis, where this conversation turned into a deal. During this conversation, Hans was sharing his dreams and goals with Alfred and even told him that he wanted to start a watch business. Alfred knew how passionate Hans was about his dreams and decided to help him out. Since Davis saw massive potential in Hans, he offered to give him capital so that Hans could start his business. And that's how Wilsdorf and Davis LTD was founded in 1905. At that time, the company had partnered up with the famous watchmaking company, Herman Egler, to start the company's journey toward watchmaking. The name Wilsdorf and Davis LTD was later changed to Rolex in 1908. It is important to note that in those days, watches were primarily worn by women. Hans was able to convince the masses that even men can wear them too. But at that point in time, pocket watches were trending, and Hans was ready to break this trend and make sure that everyone used a wristwatch as opposed to a pocket watch. So in order to do so, he embarked on his journey to Europe, where he met quite a few local watchmakers. Amidst all this, World War I broke out. Many were expecting this event to affect the company, but the exact opposite happened. The soldiers who were fighting on the front lines wore the watch due to their reliability. Furthermore, the brand won a Class A Certificate of Precision from London's Kew Observatory. They also won the first ever wrist chronometer rating from Switzerland. But amidst the wins, the company faced a huge issue. The government began to charge them a whopping 33% tax, which forced Hans to move the headquarters from London to Vienna and then Geneva. The first innovative product that they came out with was the Rolex Oyster, and that completely changed the fate of the company. This took place in 1926, and in the following year, he marketed this watch by making Mercedes Glitz swim between England and France wearing this watch to show the durability of the watch. We must add that this was a marvelous marketing strategy. The marketing tactics did not stop here. 
To gain international recognition, Ons took to the London Daily Mail newspaper and spoke about the watch being worn by Mercedes Klitsche during such an event. This was then followed by the watch being marketed by placing it in a fishbowl. In 1928, Hans took the extra step and hired top model Evelyn Laid to promote the watch. In 1933, British racing motorist and motoring journalist Sir Malcolm Campbell drove his vehicle at 300 miles per hour wearing this watch, and Sir Malcolm was pretty pleased by the performance of it. In 1931, Rolex released the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, this watch was the first ever waterproof and self-winding wristwatch that existed in the world. But then World War II hit and the world and Rolex suffered. To top this off, Hans' wife also passed away during this time. This led him to start a charity organization known as the Wilsdorf Foundation. And this is the very same foundation that controls Rolex to this day, as Hans has given his 100% ownership stake in the company to this foundation. This was actually quite a smart move of his, as due to this, Rolex does not have to pay tax, nor can it be publicly sold and most of the money made by Rolex is donated to charity and social causes in Geneva. In 1946, Rolex sold its 50,000th certified chronometer, while in the following year it sold its 100,000th certified Rolex chronometer. While in the following year it sold its 100,000th certified Rolex chronometer. Rolex Date Just and Rolex Day Date are just some models that gained the company massive fame back in the day. Rolex holds a value of $8 billion and provides its customers with an exclusive watch collection system. Starting a company is no joke, especially when there was no inheritance to rely on, nor was there any support from anyone, but Hans did it and blessed the world with some of the most luxurious and elegant watches to ever exist. That's all for today. We'll see you soon with a new business case study and story. If you like this video, do drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell icon.